So I'm going to talk about something that's uh, really, uh, that we've been working on for almost two years now. Uh, we're really passionate about creating impact through technology and uh, realize that uh, climate change and its effects are actually, uh, they're global, but they're having a very significant impact in Pakistan as well. I was just recently uh, invited at Slush. Uh, this is, uh, we were selected as one of the top 30 impact startups globally. And uh, this meant moving to Helsinki for about uh, two weeks. Uh, people from about 30 countries came over. The organizers told us to uh, pack uh, really warm clothes because this time of the year, Helsinki has a lot of snow. That's why it's called Slush. But when we got there, we realized that there's no Slush at Slush. Uh, that, that was uh, a bit of a surprise. It actually wasn't bad weather at all. It was like 10 degrees centigrade. So it was, it was a moderately uh, fine, I guess. The other interesting thing is that they told us that this is the hottest or warmest November in the history of Finland in, in 100 years. So uh, this just g gives you a uh, sense of magnitude on the kind of things that are happening because of climate change and because uh, we're able to now actually see a lot of that impact. This year we lost about 2,000 lives just a few months ago in Karachi because of a heat wave. Um, climate change is absolutely real. Let's look at who's, who's uh, responsible for some of this. And uh, the irony here is that the countries that are producing a lot of these emissions are uh, rich countries where they're able to generate a lot of emissions, and uh, they're not really held responsible for the consequences, uh, in a way. India, uh, China, United States, they're all doing this. And if you look at just a simple metric, the average emissions per capita in the United States, that number is 20 times higher than uh, somebody for somebody in Pakistan. So it just gives you a sense of how much, uh, uh, what sort of difference we have. And climate change is really unfair because the countries that are most vulnerable to the consequences of climate change uh, actually aren't playing uh, any role in the contributing factors. Um, Pakistan is actually one of the most vulnerable uh, spaces because our agriculture industry is uh, directly uh, in the line of fire. And uh, you can see a lot of uh, the results uh, if you just look back uh, on a few big catastrophic uh, weather-related events. So it's affecting us in four unique ways. First of all is floods. If anybody remembers, in 2010, we had a devastating flood, caused about uh, 2,000 lives, a million livestock lost, and uh, we had 11 million people who uh, lost their homes. So uh, the government machinery crumbled. This was uh, basically an overwhelming uh, event for them. Then you have droughts. This is, by the way, in Sindh province. This is, most people might think this is in Balochistan. But uh, this gentleman here, he's a, he was a farmer, and his, uh, about a decade back, he used to grow crops here. And uh, that's how much the landscape has changed, and that's how much uh, the landscape is changing. And on the water front, so we've got two problems. One, we've got rising water levels, which is going to affect our coastal integrity. But the other thing that is unique about Pakistan is that we have about 5,000 glaciers, and a lot of the irrigation is controlled by uh, this ecosystem where the glaciers melt at on a certain amount of time, and uh, this contributes to a lot of the water that's available for agriculture. But here's, here's what it is. So we're about 135th on uh, carbon dioxide emissions, but we're at risk for all the major consequences that climate change brings. Uh, the World Bank estimates that we're losing about $5 billion uh, a year now because of degraded environmental conditions. And uh, believe it or not, but 60% of the population is still linked to agriculture in some form or the other. And uh, this is contributing to about 20% of our GDP. Uh, milk in itself, because I want to talk about dairy, uh, it's uh, about half of the value of agriculture we get in Pakistan is from milk. So you can say milk has about 10% uh, uh, impact in our GDP. And uh, it's, it's starting to affect things in a way where this is Abbas. He's a, a small farmer just outside of Islamabad. Uh, traditionally, milk yields are really poor in Pakistan. Uh, in Pakistan, the number is 2,000 uh, liters of milk per annum on average. In Europe, it's about 9,000. So it gives you a sense of magnitude of, uh, of the opportunity that we're missing if we were just to able to like, do something about this. But why should we care? 
that's the question. I mean, uh, most people here are living in an urban environment. They really don't, uh, they're not really bothered by a lot of the things that are happening in the agriculture space. Well, I think you should care because uh, according to the UN, we're supposed to double our food output in the next 35 years to keep up with the growing population demand. And food security is going to be key in a lot of the debates that go on in the future. It's going to be absolutely essential to make sure uh, that countries have their food secured. Pakistan this year, unfortunately, has become a net importer of milk. A trillion dollars of milk is sold every year in the world. And Pakistan is the fourth largest milk producer. The top three uh, are actually emerging markets where uh, you have small farmers that are not part of the big dairy farm uh, industry. And this contributes to two things. In Pakistan, essentially, uh, primitive agri practices and climate change are contributing directly to low milk yield. Dairy is also a complicated business, so farmers want something that can help them address this change. And as the temperatures are uh, going haywire, basically, uh, it affects cows in a very uh, negative manner because cows are directly, their temperature is directly linked to their uh, milk yield. So we built a cowler. It's a smart wearable device that fits around the animal's neck. We're tracking the temperature and uh, studying the behavior of the animal. So it's, uh, we're, we're finding out when it's eating, when it's sleeping, when it's uh, being fed, when it's being milked. And using all this information, we're uh, putting all this information into uh, a big data analytics platform where we're able to give actionable recommendations to the farmer on exactly what to do to improve milk yield, how to detect diseases at an early stage so it can help them uh, improve herd health, how to detect heat so that they can improve the herd pregnancy rates. Cowler, it's a product that's designed for, to work for farmers anywhere in the world. So when we were doing the design for this, we made sure that it had everything in it that uh, the farmer needed. It doesn't have any on switch. It's waterproof, ruggedized. Uh, it has a six month battery life. And we're working on something really novel where we want to power cowler by the cow itself. So uh, basically the idea that it works is that all the cowlers are connected to a solar powered base station. So you could have one person in the village that buys a base station that costs about $100. And everybody in the, uh, in the village can then uh, put uh, cowlers on their cows, collect their data, and then uh, we started sending out text messages in English, we realized that farmers don't uh, know how to like read English. Then we sent out multilingual text messages, we realized that some farmers can't even read. So now we give them a robotic phone call telling them that cow number three, four, and five are not feeling well, you should call the vet. Uh, this is the $350 billion market, ladies and gentlemen. We're trying to revolutionize the dairy industry now because we're absolutely sure that this can have a deep and positive impact. We've done about 30 pilots uh, and we're fulfilling an order for about 750 units locally to, uh, to early adopter customers. Uh, so going back to Abbas, uh, he's been using this for about uh, two months. We were able to raise his average milk yield from 12 and a half liters to 14 liters. He's making an extra $500 a month now. This is essentially bringing him out of poverty. So this has the uh, capacity to create a lot of impact locally in Pakistan. But we don't want to stop, stop there. We want to look at the global dairy uh, population. It's about 280 million, 40 million of those are living in Pakistan. We're targeting if we just look at 5% uh, yield improvement, uh, we, got, uh, we got much more than that. But if we can just do 5%, we can add $2 billion into the national economy. That is the size of Pakistan's current IT sector, by, by the way. Um, and globally, this can have a huge impact. So a trillion dollars worth of milk is sold. It's, it's got enormous impact. And uh, I was just at Slush. Uh, we were absolutely excited to make, launch this in 10 to 15 countries in the next six months. Places like Tanzania and Nigeria and Brazil and Mexico and Vietnam, just to name a few. So the question really is, how do we use innovation to tackle something like climate change? Uh, we can try to reduce emissions, obviously. We can try to change our behavior, that's good. Uh, but we also need to address this problem in different ways. We need to make sure that we can uh, bring more innovation because, frankly speaking, these solutions, technology-based solutions, they're not at scale yet. The solar power, renewable energy has not been scaled yet. And one of the reasons is because it's either too expensive or there are other barriers to entry that need to be removed. And some of them could actually be removed through the use of a more innovative technology. 
For example, in Pakistan, you, there's an, another interesting thing. Uh, you could just install crop sensors and uh, possibly help farmers ha grow their crops better. You could give them information about the temperature, about the humidity, about the uh, ambient uh, environmental conditions, and uh, just help them grow their crops better. Uh, help them reduce water usage, help them reduce uh, fertilizer usage, and uh, gain, uh, like, make them have a yield improvement in their gains. But it's also about figuring out how to solve the bigger challenges. For example, efficient transportation is something uh, a lot of people in Pakistan probably won't be driving a, a Tesla anytime soon, but you have to realize that these are the kind of solutions that will make a, a deep-rooted impact. So the solution is everything. You need to deploy technology, you need to use technology in everything that you do in, to try and create uh, as minimum of a footprint as possible. So the question I'd like to leave you with is, what pioneering technology are you going to bring up next? It could be through policy, it could be contributing in terms of uh, spreading the word, it could just be contributing in terms of like just a technology uh, change itself. So thank you so much.